My name is Katerina Splay, and today I'll talk to you about a subject that personally think is very, very important, and that is modern slavery. Let me start with a personal story. I was having a lesson at school, and at one point someone asked, Why, miss, is there still slavery? And I was surprised. I thought, how can 16-year-old kids ignore that not only slavery exists, but it's a phenomenon that makes millions of people suffer globally. How can we turn our backs to such serious matters? And slavery has always existed in almost every culture. And during the 19th century, many countries tried to abolish it. However, I'll say that to bribe the first official constitutional law to be clear about slavery being a completely legal practice was a great one. In 1822, only a few months after the beginning of our War of Independence. So, what is actually contemporary slavery? It's not that easy to define. Probably we could say that it's the opposite of freedom. But slavery is an umbrella term covering the various forms of human exploitation. Against all the laws and human rights and labor standards, slavery is a situation where one person has absolute power over another and controls his life, liberty, and fortune. It's basically the subjection of one person to another and it's an extreme form of inequality. And once a person is a slave, it's not that easy to leave. Now let me tell you the number of people living under these conditions. It's over 40 to 40 4 to 5 million of people globally. It's a huge number. But not all of these people are trapped in the same kind of slavery. There exist many forms. First, we have the first labor types of slavery, which include state imposed forced labor, forced sexual exploitation, and forced labor exploitation. Another form of slavery, which uh, many argue that it actually is not a form of slavery, is a forced marriage. And uh, it's one of the most clear forms of slavery. If we just think, one person is sold into marriage, and then they provide free domestic work, and they have no sexual autonomy, or autonomy of any kind, that doesn't sound pleasant to me. And you may believe that uh, slavery affects only adults. I sadly need to tell you that more than a quarter of all those 45 million of slaves are children under 18 years of age. These kids are deprived of everything. They get no education, no time to rest, no time to play. And they're harmed in any way, mentally, morally, physically, in any possible way. The problem is that uh, most of us have the illusion that all that is far away from us and that we're not linked to those slaves in any way. Modern slavery exists everywhere. No place is immune. And we're linked to those places, and I'll tell you why. More than 70% of the world's human exploitation is used for providing goods that we will buy. Let me bring some examples. In uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, or India, slaves are used to produce carpets. Um, we might say this carpet is handmade, good quality, we mean. Who cares to know the circumstances under which this carpet was made? Or in Angola, slaves in Angola are used to extract diamonds. And also in Turkey, citrus fruits, cumin, peanuts, furniture are produced by child labor. And also kids are used to extract special stones that are necessary for the production of our mobile phones. Quite ironic. They might, might not even know what a mobile phone means. But I want to be more precise. Here is a chart. The higher the number, the more transparent the company is in their productive methods. And slave free, of course. We have no companies with 100% transparency. That would be great. But we have a company with 0% transparency. So if you have an HP computer, for example, which has a higher number, you can feel good. There's less chance a slave was involved in its uh, production. But if you have an Apple phone, and even more a Samsung phone, the majority of us have, I think, a Samsung phone, 
you can feel it a little bit more cautious. Almost one out of two products in those companies has used humans' exploitation. I now take for granted that you've understood and realized the extent of this phenomenon. And you might be thinking, what can I do to help? How can I help and those slave options in Libya and so many places in Libya happen? It's not easy to end modern slavery. It's not easy at all. However, there are a few things that we can all do. For example, be a smart consumer. Every time you're about to buy a new thing, like a mobile phone or a computer, think before you buy. Do you really need it? And if you do, then search on the internet. Do these companies use slaves in their production? And if you find that something is wrong, take action. Boycott the company, send letters asking as to which methods they use to produce your products and where they do it. Send letters to the government expressing your worries on the topic. Try buying products that are fair trade and slave free certified. It doesn't cost much. There are many organizations out there protesting against slavery but also taking action into solving this crime. The Walk Free Foundation and Slavery Now, Anti-Slavery are just a few to name. Get involved yourself. Slavery is a phenomenon affecting the vulnerable communities, so we should help these people overcome their vulnerability. Donating can be one of the ways to help. Use your social media to inform others. Discuss about slavery at school, with your teachers, with your classmates, with your colleagues at work. Know that according to every, every single law internationally, slavery is completely illegal. So there is no excuse to pursuing this practice. Here is a video of some ex-slaves talking. to a room and I saw a big man. I was very small and he was able to do what he wanted to do with me. They told my mom they would send me to school. I left home thinking I would be sent to school. It was a lie. A man came into our village and told us it was good work available and that we'd be paid well. He told us to come work with him. But when we went there, all we got were beatings. We were beaten all the time. How did we work there? We were only given food once a day. We didn't even care for the food because we would be so tired. Sometimes we wouldn't eat. We would just change our clothes and sleep. He made us work for a few months, then six months, then eight months, and then suddenly we started realizing that we were trapped. When my daughter and son left, they said, we're going for just one year, so don't worry about us. We'll come back very soon. We have to go there to earn something for you. But they never came back. He was hit in a panel. So you can see the mark here. And this reminds me of my time when I used to work here. I was kept in chains. That was the most fearful part for me. We were dragged around by the chains. My leg used to bleed because of the chains.
and don't just turn your backs to all those layers. If we have the tiniest fraction of human dignity, we need to help. We owe to. Because how else can we bear to live when all these human lives are enslaved and we do nothing about it? That might sound quite cliche, but every action counts. The last thing I want to share with you is a Chinese saying my dad told me the other day, and I'm going to say it three. So, let's all make our first step and set a common goal to end slavery in our lifetimes. Thank you.